So I read Guild by Raven Kennedy. I think it was towards the end of last summer and I really, really enjoyed it. It made it into my best books of the year list, but only as like an honorable mention because it just did things that I did not expect it to. So we're gonna go through a little recap of Guild. My memory is a little bit hazy because it has been a while since I read it. And the pacing in that one is quite slow. Like it's a quick read, but it's mainly set up for the series, I feel. But the Plated Prisoner series is a King Midas retelling. And in Guild, we are following a young woman called Auron who has been gold touched by Midas. Her entire body, her hair, everything is gold apart from her teeth and the whites of her eyes. She lives in the palace in this like gilded cage, everything surrounding Midas, his clothes, everything is completely gold. And she lives in a cage in the palace. Now she actually doesn't mind this because she grew up on the street. She's faced a lot of terrible things in her life. Content one is for sexual assault throughout the entirety of this series, I believe. But she had a terrible upbringing and she met Midas when she was on the streets. Now Midas is a king by marriage. He's not a king because he was born into the role and he found Auron when she was I think about 15 or 16 years old and protected her so she's in love with him and he is also in love with her however from the beginning of Guild the very first scene is an orgy with all of they're called like the royal saddles they're essentially like the women that he sleeps with I can't remember the name for it but like consorts maybe kind of deal. Oren is just like chilling in her cage watching the entire thing throughout the first book. We realise that Midas doesn't seem like a love interest, like he doesn't seem like a stand-up guy, especially when he tries to essentially sell Oren's body to this guy who's the ruler of a different realm to get what he wants politically. So they're all on the move to go and overtake this kingdom and Midas takes all of his saddles, including Oren, with him. But on the road they are captured by the Red Ray who I think, if I remember correctly, are like a group of bandits. They're all treated absolutely terribly. Quite a few people die. And right at the end of the book, the captain of the Red Raids tries to have his wicked way with Auron. She is obviously not into that. And she actually gold touches him. And we find out that it's very possible. I mean, I'm 99% sure that Auron is the one with the abilities and King Midas has none. Just when that happens, the commander of the king of a different kingdom who is warring with pretty much the rest of the world. The king is called King Rot, but his commander, Commander Rip, overtakes the vessel that has Oren and all of the royal saddles and the guards that were supposed to be guarding them on it and that is where book one ends. There's Fae in this world but it's not immediately apparent as soon as you start. It seems that there's like a different realm for the Fae and once upon a time they came across which is where the magic of the world came from but nobody's really seen them for the longest time but it's very obvious as soon as Oren meets Commander Rip that he is indeed a full-blooded Fae and King Rot is made out to be awesome his commander is made out to be terrible but from his first meeting right at the end of that book it actually seems like he's a pretty hot guy. So now I'm even more confused because I was confused reading it because I fully expected going into Guild that it was going to be a romance with King Midas. That became very suspicious very early on in this book and now Commander Rip has turned up. So in this video I'm going to be reading both the second and third books in the Plated Prisoner series. So we have Glint which is book two and Gleam which is book three and I'm going to be giving you all of my spoilery thoughts on both of these. You guys asked for it. I was just gonna like read them normally as I do the majority of the books I read and give you non-spoiler thoughts but y'all wanted to know what I thought of these two. So because I have the absolute pleasure of interviewing Raven Kennedy in just under a week. I'm wanting it to catch up on the series. Before that I'm reading them pretty much back to back. I might read one thing in between them but I might as well just combine the video while I'm reading them so close together. Obviously spoilers. I can't imagine you clicking on this video if you don't want to be spoiled for this series but in case you haven't read these two or started this series I would definitely advise that you click away and come back when you have read these ones. But I am gonna get started on Glint. It seems, based on the text size and everything like the formatting is the same as book one. So I feel like it's gonna be a pretty quick read and we'll see what I think. So I am 109 pages in to Glint. It's really quick. Um, The text is like relatively large, but then aside from that, if a chapter ends on the right hand page there's like a blank page before the next chapter starts so that makes it a bit faster as well um i will say the pacing is incredibly slow because in 100 pages like literally nothing's happened the army 
that like commander rips legion whatever they are i'm talking in crescent city terms i'm also reading that at the same time but the army has camped they're traveling to wherever midas is i think and i think midas was heading to take on king rot although i don't exactly remember that part but they've made camp anyway i don't know see i don't know how king rot plays into this because he's supposed to be a horrible person so he could still be a horrible person or he could maybe be misunderstood like a little bit of resound energy in here but i think commander rip might be the love interest so with him it's either going to be like she defects to join whichever kingdom i can't remember what number the kingdom is that king rot rules so she's either going to defect to go over to them or commander rip doesn't want to be with king rot and then they leave together or something similar. I don't know, but I'm feeling like I'm finally getting the vibes that I thought I was going to get in Guild with like a romance between her and Midas, but I'm getting it with Rip. And I also think that Midas has, I don't know if he ever had genuine feelings for her or whether it was all some elaborate plan to become a king and he just knew that she had a useful power. So he kind of gaslit her essentially, pretended that he loved her and he cared about her and all of this just so that he had control of her power. Or like, does he actually care about her? But I think at some point in this series, he's gonna come back and be like, nah, bitch, you come in with me. Um, and she's gonna be torn away from the gorgeous, gorgeous, commander rip who has spikes which is a little bit scary to me because they just like stick out all over his body and they're quite long they're not like little bumpy spikes they're huge but then i realized that she has all those ribbons down her spine which i'm assuming it's something to do with be a fae because all magic is in this world but i want some kind of like is she full fae i don't know and i want some kind of explanation of what exactly they are but i think that his spikes are similar to her ribbons maybe it's a little touch when they're getting it on <laughs> that's a really weird thought i'm sorry anyway i'm gonna um go back and read some more because like i said i'm currently reading crescent city um and i've got to the bit in crescent city where it hurts so i'm gonna avoid reading that again for a, a good while and make progress in glint while i do so i'm just about to go away work out but I thought I would bring you a check-in because I'm now on page 326 so it's been 200 pages since I last spoke to you guys but not a lot has happened it's very slow moving I feel like the purpose of this book is to talk about Oren breaking like coming into her own essentially with the help of commander rip who's been like pushing her this entire time and trying to get her to use her ribbons to help her out instead of being in this constant thing of like i have to hide them nobody can find out who i am i want to be safe and all of this and i have really been enjoying that i've also been enjoying watching her attitudes change towards fourth's army lou hands down my favorite character in this book and i have to say i really like commander rip as well i do wish that she'd stop trying with the saddles because they're the worst they've always been the worst no matter how nice to them she is they're always awful and i feel like it is going to come to a point at some place in this series where they finally kind of like get their act together and come through for Aaron in some way but unfortunately I am not at that place yet so her concern because it's something she's always thinking about like how are the guards how are the saddles like are they all okay and I just don't really care about <laughs> any of them I'm more interested in like the actual plot of what's going on and also like the romantic elements I will say that the romance so far like it is slow burn it does seem to be tilting towards commander rip which i am a big fan of because midas is a massive fucking douchebag but it's it's a slow burn like it's taken a while to get somewhere which does make sense based on oren's attitude and also her past and all of that kind of stuff so i'm now up to page 326 we've had the reveal now as well while oren has admitted to being fey and also that she came from the realm of the fey which i had already kind of gathered but we're about to meet king rot which i'm real interested about because like i said to you guys I don't know whether he's gonna actually be a bad guy and Rip is working for him like for some reason like he's indebted to him or something or whether he's gonna be like more misunderstood and we're also going to have the reappearance of Midas so I'm really excited to see how Oren's gonna react to all of that and also how everything is going to play out. I am aiming to finish this today as well and I'm assuming that most of the reveals and the shocking stuff is gonna come at the end so we'll see because I, I don't know what's coming at this point like i feel like it's going to be dramatic where everybody meets up again but i i don't yet know what kind of direction the series is going in so because her chapters are so infrequent i keep forgetting to talk to you guys about marielle is that her name the queen of sixth kingdom it's Midas's wife but she has this plot going to overthrow Midas and now that he's left she's kind of seizing control and I gotta say 
I don't like her. I appreciate what she's doing and I support what she's trying to do. Like get rid of Midas because he is a sleazy bastard and we don't like him. And regain the control that her family's had over this kingdom the entire time and he's kind of come in. He doesn't even have the power. But he's come in, taken over, changed everything to his life plan and completely disrespects her. Although he literally disrespects anybody that he comes into contact with, to be honest. So I appreciate what she's doing and I like her cause and what she's standing for. But her as a person, I'm not a big fan and I really liked when um, all of the peasants essentially refused her gifts and snubbed her. But she's just got the map that shows a location in the Feyland so I'm really interested to see what that turns up. Well, I'm going to assume at this point that it's going to be in the next book and Oren has just returned to Midas and he is being a piece of shit as usual. So yeah, I got 50 pages left. Excited to see how this resolves but I was real sad to see Oren leave Rip and now Midas is about to put her in a cage again. So um, I'm hoping for more Rip. I don't think I'm going to see him again in this book, sadly, but I'm pretty much going straight into Glee in the next couple of days. So I'm sure I'll be fine. God, right. I still have, oh my God. I still have the Golden Gold Rhyme poem at the end of the book to read. Rip is rot. Rip it. Oh my God, Rip is rot. I can't believe that that took me by surprise, but Jesus. There's so much that happened in those last, was it 50 pages that I had? Midas exposed himself for being the abuser that he is. Oren went wild and just started ripping apart her cage and turning everything gold and rip his rot but like is he a bad guy what is the rottingness and like that thing that takes over him and the spikes like it makes sense why they're emblems a tree though because i was thinking like the king is the roots and rip is the thorns but actually rip is both the roots and the thorns oh my god I can't believe it. I also can't believe that I didn't see that coming in any way. The ends of these books, like the plot twists at the ends, are wild. I'm so glad that Midas has been exposed now. I don't know what Oren's plan is now because I assumed that she was going to try and break free and go back to Fourth Arby and Rip. But now she's not happy that he lied to her, but she also doesn't want to stay in a cage with Midas. And so I don't know where that all is going. But I um, really enjoyed this installment. It's weird like the first book it's kind of really slow but also really fast to read which obviously i understand that doesn't make sense the writing is decent i will say it's a little bit too heavy in metaphor in a couple of places and it reads like a little bit clunky where some of that metaphor is used and plot wise i do find it interesting could have had more happening earlier on but like i said this is mainly about Oren coming into herself and like discovering rip as a character in the fourth army and all that kind of stuff so i'm guessing in gleam midas and rock are gonna go head to head and i don't i don't know how it's gonna resolve because i think this series is gonna be five books now i thought it was gonna be four i think somebody told me that it was five so i don't know what's gonna happen because we still have a long, long way to go. And I know book three is like 600 pages. So I haven't caught out this yet. Because like I said, I've still got the gold gold vine to read. But as soon as I finish this, I'm going to finish up the 40 pages of Crenn City and go to bed. So I will let you know what my rating is when I come back and pick up Gleam. But I'm feeling a four star right now. So it's probably going to come out at around a four. But I'm really excited to get into Gleam now. But I'm a little bit scared because I feel like there's going to be a cliffhanger at the end of that. And then obviously I have to wait till May until I can read book four. Hey, so I said I'd let you guys know when I started Gleam. I actually started it in bed last night. I am 100 and something, like 115, I think, pages into it. And I'm really enjoying this one so far. It's picked up quite a bit. I'm really loving that Aaron has gone back to Midas and she's like, you're not putting me in a cage. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. I'm up to the point where like he's just locked her in the bedroom and she's just jumped out of the balcony and oh my god it made me laugh when she was just hanging there by her ribbons and Lou was at the bottom like what are you doing? But I'm also really excited that we've seen Lou again already in this book because she is my favourite character. So yeah nothing really to report but I thought I'd let you guys know where I'm up to since I have started this and also to let you guys know that I did indeed give glint four stars and also big thank you to april for gifting this one to me so 210 pages in now and oh my god like i'm enjoying it i really am especially a couple of the last chapters i read had a rip in and we finally had like a little bit more romantic progression but i'm fucking sick of midas i'm sick of him i want him gone and i know aaron's like i can't just leave yet but she's like removed her romantic attachment to him pretty much she's not into him anymore she doesn't want to be with him she's not fooling herself that he actually loves her she's aware 
aware that he's using her, but she's biding her time about getting out of there. And I get that she doesn't trust Rip, and I know why she doesn't trust Rip, but I'm like, please, because she is way more powerful than Mida. She could just like wrap him up in ribbons and pull him apart, and to be honest, he deserves it. So the conversation between her and Midas about him keep trying to lock her out and keep manipulating her, and her telling him to stop it, it's just getting tedious. And I'm like, I just want Midas gone, essentially. But I am really enjoying the stuff between Oren and Rip, and Melina, still the same thing as in Glint. I support what she's doing. I don't like her, but I'm really interested to see what she's gonna find when I'm assuming she is actually gonna pursue that map that was given to her, because otherwise what was the point in it? So I'm really intrigued about that, and I kind of just want her to hurry up on her way and go see what's there now. So I'm in sprints again, same shit, different day, but I just got to page 344 of Gleam, and I just read chapter 28, where Oren has gone to Slade finally and been like, you know what, I actually do want you, and it's taken me a while to like fully get invested in this romance between Oren and Slade. Like, there was a little bit of a spark early on, but I wasn't like feeling it, but now I'm feeling it. And like Slade comes with his own problems as well. He's not like a perfect love interest, but I'm into it. I'm really into it. Like, oh my God. Chapter 29, I feel is gonna be good, but I feel like something terrible is gonna happen before the end or right at the end, which would be even worse. And I don't, oh my God. I just need to keep reading. I have to say, like, I obviously already knew that it was difficult for Oren with the fact that she can't touch anyone in the daytime because she'll turn them to gold. But right now, <laughs> it's fucking unbearable. Like, Jesus Christ. She's just confessed her love to Slade slash Ravager slash Rip. And now he's just looked at the sky and he said, we have about 30 minutes, I think. And I'm assuming that's when it turns night. It's kind of hoping he'd be immune to her powers though because he's Fae and, like, they wouldn't necessarily work on him. But, um... <laughs> I'm guessing that's not the case, so we wait, I guess. Oh my god, that 35 page sex scene that I read last night was fire. Like, I read the entire thing during the final sprint of Gavin's Polathon sprint, and I felt like I was visibly sweating. Like, that 20 pages of foreplay was unbearable. <laughs> to read, but like in the best way. Like I said, um, I really wish the Oren's powers weren't so affected by daylight so that they had to wait until the sunset before anything could happen. But oh my god, Rip is just, like I do think he has, um, and he's blaming it on Fae stuff, which we've seen before in Fae romance. It's the like primal Fae stuff happening with like the possessiveness and stuff and he is very pushy so he's not like your perfect unproblematic love interest but i'm here for it i'm really i'm really into slade what can i say and i can't even keep track of the names i keep calling him because i think he has at least three right now but yeah that was amazing 10 out of 10 for the 35 pages what i will like have a not a rant about but what is it about characters in these books wasting their time on terrible terrible people like i complained about melina throughout this vlog but she is literally the fucking worst like i don't know if i hate her or the saddles more she has this thing where like she's trying to reclaim her kingdom and midas is taking it all from her which yeah i i do still support that but she doesn't acknowledge that like she's not fit to be queen because all this time that Midas has been doing all of this stuff she hasn't been like ruling quietly in the background she hasn't been learning how to be a queen she's just been sat on her entitled ass sulking and the guy what's he called he's just died <laughs> the guy who was her saddle um I feel bad at Gio like I loved the bit where he called her a cold bitch. But like, dude, you should have just abandoned her ages ago. But I do accept that he's like from probably a bit of a lower status than her. So maybe she's worth putting up with for like the luxury that he gets from being her salad. Salad. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> from being her saddle post, jeez, I don't like her. I'm a little bit concerned at this point. I have 175 pages left. My interview with Raven Kennedy is in two hours, so I'm not gonna finish it because I'm currently doing a bit of editing. Then I'm gonna make dinner, I have candle restock, and then the interview. So I won't finish it before my interview, but I do still plan on finishing it tonight. But because I wasn't expecting the romance here in the middle, I thought it was gonna come more towards the end because everything about the series is pretty slow, to be honest. I know, ooh, I know worry that the stuff, like the reveals at the end that are gonna come um, are going to be integral to the romance and be like sad romance kind of stuff. I'm wondering if they're tying to this area that Rip has, or Slade, or Rot, has bargained for with Midas. Midas has kind of threatened him about Aura and it's like, if you don't stay away from her, then something bad might happen there. So I'm wondering if it's gonna come down to what that is and I'm, like, I don't know what the reveal could be. Like, that's obviously a secret. 
We're obviously going to have a big cliffhanger at the end, but I have no idea what that could be. But I guess I'll just have to wait and see. Hi, I'm just here to let you guys know that I just had my interview with Raven Kennedy and she's literally the sweetest human. So I would definitely recommend you go check that interview out if you would like. She's honestly just so such a nice person. And now I'm going to go finish the last 200 pages of Gleam. She did say in the interview that the cliffhanger in this one isn't as painful as someone's in the other two books. But some people in the chat disagreed, so I guess we'll see what I think. Oh my God, the thing that I thought was maybe gonna happen in Glint, or that like I mentioned was a possibility when I was reading Glint, has just happened where um, Oren's ribbons are playing with the rip spikes. <laughs> I feel like tension has been building through the last like, I think I've read about 60 pages in this sitting and I'm on page 488 and I just feel like something bad's gonna happen and Midas has just made Oren guild a whole bunch of stuff which he's not too bothered about because he said that she can see Digby if she does but the way he's going about it and the way he's speaking I feel like he's gonna take her down to the dungeons and then trap her in there which um will put an end to her being able to escape, Queen Kayla getting rid of her, Queen Kayla's a really cool character actually I'm really like in her and then obviously she has a meeting with Slade that she's supposed to be going to as well so I'm a little bit nervous so I guess I was kind of right but what I didn't call was Oren getting her ribbons chopped off which holy shit was difficult to read um they're such an integral part of her and her story which is why obviously it's a big deal that they were cut off but also it's making me wonder if they're gonna grow back at some point um because I just can't imagine her like not having them at all but I guess we'll see I don't feel like Midas can live for this because um Slade's gonna find out at some point. Um, but I do hope it is Oren that kills him if he does die. But I have like 90 pages left, which I'm gonna read now. And I'm, I'm just hoping that she gets out of this situation before the end of this book. Cause I can't, I couldn't have it end. I feel like it could have ended like here, but I couldn't have coped if it did end here. So I'm glad that it um, continues a little bit. I'm a little bit scared. I'm finished. And wow, was that an ending. So lots of shocking, shocking things happening throughout the end of this book. To be fair, that is probably the most traumatic cliffhanger of the three books because in like the one at the end of the first one was that she gold touched the captain and then Rip turned up. Then at the end of the second one, it was that Rip is actually King Gravinger, King Rock or Slade, whatever you want to call him. And at the end of this one, it's that he just killed Auron. Slade just killed Auron so that um, he could get her out of there without her killing herself. So in terms of like all of the cliffhangers, that one is definitely the most drastic because like, I need to know what happens next. I do feel, though, because if you remember right at the beginning of this book, he killed all of the guards to get to Auron when she was trapped in the room, like, by the cage. And then when she complained about it, he brought them back to life. So, I mean, quite a lot has happened to Auron in this one. She's just done all of that stuff with her power. She had her ribbons cut off. So, I think he's going to bring her back to life. And the main question is, what is she going to be like when she's come back? I feel like, because of how she's been throughout this, she, she might be mad at him. But, like, he did save her life. Like, she couldn't let go she was prepared to kill herself she just wanted to protect him but i do feel like she's gonna be mad about it when she comes back so i'm hoping she comes back intact i am hoping that her ribbons grow back at some point because that was sad that was real hard to read but oh my god when she killed midas that was epic and midas being bard and east did not see that coming although makes a lot of sense because they're both absolute dicks so yeah i really enjoyed this one it's definitely my favorite of the three that i've read still four stars but like i said glenn was like for 3.5 solid four stars like 4.5 real real good stuff best in the series and it also has more like plot than the rest like i said the cliffhanger at the end of this is actually like relating to what happens next as opposed to like reveals about characters and stuff so yeah i'm really excited i'm real hyped for may when glow comes out and i'm also because we haven't seen melina since geo died so i'm excited to see her again just because i think she is actually going to go search for this fae thing that they're talking about and i'm guessing that the direction of the plot for glow is going to be i feel like i assume that all of the other kingdoms are going to come for them i really hope they don't know because i like kayla queen kayla she seems cool she seems like a badass bitch but um she was prepared to kill people and also marry Midas. so i guess she can't be all that good but yeah had a great time with these two books i'll probably because i've done spoiler vlogs or a spoiler vlog for these two books i will probably do one for glow as well but seeing as you guys requested this vlog i do hope that you have enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and i'll see you guys sometime soon bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate 
You say you're a go where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no